Oh, hey guys. Uh, the setup seems kind of fake, doesn't it? <laughs> I just wanted to try some new uh, intros and new beginnings. Try to make this a little bit more uh, professional. Um, some quick updates. Uh, by now, if you're an Epe Fencer, you probably know that we are losing Coach Ben. Uh, Coach Ben has um, got a new job in Virginia Beach, and uh, he is, um, by the time you're seeing this, he'll be gone. Uh, so he's leaving this week, the week that I'm recording this video. Um, so we will continue to have an EPIC class. Uh, I will run those, and yes, I just poked myself in the finger with, with a jeweler's screwdriver. So a lesson learned, um, focus on one thing at a time. Uh, but we will be... Uh, losing Ben and he's moving at the end of this week. But again, uh, like I said, I will be um, taking on the the EPE program. I have taught EPE before. Um, uh, it's not my primary weapon, but uh, prior to Ben, um, I was teaching the EPE class uh, when Coach Maya was in here. Um, so uh, if you get a chance to, uh, if you know Coach Ben, make sure you say goodbye. Um, of course, classes are scheduled to start next. October, not next October, this coming October. Um, classes will start again. Uh, we will try to continue some private lessons. Um, some of our seniors in high school is able to provide uh, private lessons now. So especially competitive students, uh, middle school age are the ideal age of, uh, of taking private lessons with our seniors. Um, and I will be, uh, as available as I can be, but if you've known in the past, um, private lessons with me are few and far between, especially once classes start. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time um, during the week. I'm usually here Mondays and Tuesdays, and I might be doing some Thursdays, depending on how big our classes are, uh, and also um, which of our vets might be returning to, to fencing in immediate time. Um, so to, to be able to provide space and time for them I might be out here on Thursdays. Um, other quick things to think about as we get ready for classes. Make sure you have face masks, not your fencing masks. Of course, if you have that, make sure you have that as well. But your face masks, have those. Um, you are required to have them uh, during class. It's only an hour, you guys will be okay. I teach uh, for three hours straight with a, with a mask on. And the kids that have been coming in here for private lessons or free fencing, uh, they've been wearing their mask. For, for two to three hours straight. So it can be done, you'll be okay. Um, parents, when you come up here, if you're coming up here uh, with the kids, uh, please make sure you have your mask on. Um, that is required for our businesses. Um, so uh, it's not a discussion whether or not uh, we agree with it. Um, it is what's required of us. Uh, but what I am asking, if you can, please stay in the vehicle. So after you drop them off, stay in the vehicle, it keeps our numbers down. So the current uh, requirements is that it is 30% is of your capacity. Um, so to try to keep our numbers down in a facility um, to, to just the students, uh, we're asking you to either enjoy downtown, uh, there are plenty of shops, restaurants, coffee shops open, um, or hang out in your vehicle. A lot of our parents have been doing that, either reading, listening to music, playing uh, words with friends on their phone, I don't know. Um, but uh, if you could do that for us, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, big, big thank you to everyone that supported us during the summer. Um, I've been hard at work here, trying to keep this place alive, um, doing videos, uh, fixing things that needs to be fixed. Uh, getting ready for your return. Uh, also, if you happen to have a bead on um, which stores might have uh, disinfectant sprays, uh, those are hard to find. <laughs> you can find hand sanitizer pretty easily. Um, you, can have, you can find sanitizing wipes pretty easily. It's those disinfectant sprays that's it's pretty hard to find. So if you know where some are, uh, drop me a line um, and I will try to pick some up, uh, or if you can grab one for me, uh, I will greatly appreciate it. Um, equipment, if you, uh, if you don't have equipment yet, that will also be helpful. We are sanitizing everything that's here, um, that's being used. So uh, if you borrow equipment and you've been here during the summer, you know that stuff does not go back into the racks or the shelves. They go back into a box 
or they're sanitized before they're put back. Um, but if you are able to look at purchasing your own equipment, that will help us, up a lot, help us out a lot. Um, other than that, I think those are the, the big updates. Um, so uh, uh, let's go on to our, the intros, and then we'll see you in the warm-ups. The All-American Fencing Academy is grateful to our sponsors who are helping us bring you our on-strip, at-home video training classes. Fox Bookkeeping, helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to run their businesses with confidence by helping them know what the score is. Steve C. McRae, PA, Burlington Family Law, Divorce, and Personal Injury Attorney. Matthew Woods, VO, Professional Voiceover Services. videos from the FIE channel. This time the video I was reviewing came from the uh, International Olympic channel or International Olympic Committee channel um, and the video got automatically flagged for a copyright infringement. Uh, one of the options you can say was uh, I'm using this video as a reaction video so um, I didn't copy it directly from the side of it, rip it out I had a tripod and I was in front and you saw me pointing and talking over the video, rewinding, fast forwarding, so um, we'll see, hopefully, I'm trying to download my original copy um, so that I can post it again, uh, but we will see. Let's do another minute here, there's a minute, I got started, nice little movement around, putting point on target, or if you have numbers like I have the numbers, you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to go to number four. Let me go to number three. Let's see if I can hit two like this. I was pretty close. Five, maybe we'll set ourselves to different numbers. One, two, and three. I'll try not to knock down that, uh, that score box. Let's try one, two, three again. One, two, three. Let's go four, five. There you go, that was a nice hit. All right, move the weapon around. Stay loose. Not always standing still, so I don't want you standing still in this one. Just move around. You don't have to be perfect on the guard. You can do some crossovers, do a little bit sometimes. Oh, I miss that one. Uh, sometimes you get close. There we go. That works. Let's see if I can do this one. Oh, I did not get that one. All right, just constant movement, putting point on target. Almost a minute. Let's get our heart rate up. There we go. All right. Let's give ourselves another minute break. Um, other things that's going on, we've, uh, I think I mentioned before, we've got a bunch of seniors in, uh, in the program now. Um, some of them, not quite sure what's gonna happen after <laughs> after this year. Some of them may stay in town for school, whether at GC, Papal State, Methodist University. Some of them are looking at schools in North Carolina, like NC State, uh, University of North Carolina. Uh, even some of our students are looking at colleges outside of the continent of the United States, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we wish them the best. Of, we wish them the best of luck, um, especially in their senior year and the way they're having to do their senior year. Uh, that, that really puts a, a damper on what you want to do in your last year in high school. All right, so about six seconds left. Um, really look forward to see you guys again. Get used to teaching classes too. All right, so a minute, last minute. Moving around, nice and easy, just put a point on target, different uh, different angles, just putting a point on target, but I want you to constantly be moving, all right, and feeling creative, see if you get pretty close, oh, I missed that one, let's try that one again, there we go, right on target, let's try some creative. 
creative ones. I've, I've seen some uh, Miles Chandler Watson business. Probably not this high. But he goes under. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving again. I can't do that. I, I would normally not do that. I'm not tall enough. He, he's like six foot four. Um, and I want to do a review because uh, there's another Italian fencer that's at six foot four. And I can't remember his name. Might be Cassaro. Um, but, you know, Chami Watson usually has an advantage above other people because he's, he's so tall. Um, but when someone else he's fencing is as tall as he, uh, I'm curious how that turns out. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is your warm ups. Um, like always, get some rest, get some water, stretch out. We'll see you in Blade Work. Hey guys, uh, in the last video I said Blade Work, so you're lucky we're not going straight into footwork. Uh, normally we do footwork after the, the warm up. So, we're going to do blade work. Um, simple enough. All right. So blade work. First one we're going to do here, we're going to do without the weapon. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to hold your arm without the weapon. So it's the letter V. The common mistake that I've seen a lot in, in sometimes in private lessons, people are holding their weapon down here. And so what you get is you get this obtuse angle and they're compensating by holding it up like that or they're using the wrist to bring it up. Um, so the weapon is really, or the arm is really straight there, and they're trying to hold it up like that. All right. What I want you to do is not use a weapon, and if you don't have a weapon, work. That, that works out great. But I want you to hold your arm in the letter V, and I want you to go ahead and point, point like I am right now. Point. So it's not like this, but that finger is straight with your arm. All right, so you're pointing at a 45 degree angle, just like that. And I want you to remember that position. You're not down here, not down here, you're up here. Now, I'm gonna to face towards you, all right? What I want you to work on this first couple times is the rotation from four back to six. So if you guys remember, movement in this direction, if, I'm, if you're right-handed, is a four. Movement in this direction is a six. Notice I'm turning my hand about 45 degrees. So if I were left-handed, there's a rotation there and a rotation there, all right? Now, we're not just rotating like this, all right? We're not just rotating where our hand stays in one position because that just does that. We're moving a little bit, not a whole lot. So if we're looking at an arc of a circle, we're not moving the whole 90 degrees. We are rotating our hand about 45 degrees and we're also moving the arm about 45 degrees. Rotation of the hand, rotation of the hand. So actually I'm breaking it up too much. It looks like that, all right? So if we're holding it all together, there's a rotation in the wrist and a rotation at the elbow as well. But we are not pushing laterally. We are not hinging, okay? So if you're holding the weapon, then we're gonna do some four, six moves. Four, six, four, six. Hard part for a lot of people is keeping this elbow right here. Everyone wants to hold it out here or their, their weapon starts going to that four position. And if I say go to six, they move the elbow to six. The elbow is fine for most of you guys. It's just moving the weapon out to six, all right? So let's start at six. Let's do five, four, six, one, four, six, two, four, six, three. So if, if you look at these two lines and where they go to, there's the letter B, all right? Four, six, four. I'm counting. Four, six, five. You'll notice when I turn, that weapon does turn with it. So it's not just going back and forth. Now we're gonna go from four to six, all right? So starting at four position, rotating to six. Not a hinge. Ready? Four, six. Back to here, that's one. Four, six. Four, six. That's three. Four, six. That's four. Four, six. That's five. Four, six. Okay? 
Now, I was doing that with a weapon. Uh, what I wanted you to do, let's go put the weapon down, do it without the weapon. All right? I want you to make sure that this arm is in the correct position, not down here. So let's do a few. Four, six, that's one. Four, six, that's two. I'd actually go back and forth, I'm sorry. Four, six, that's three. Four, six, that's four. Four, six, that's five. All right, now start from the six, four position. Four to six, that's what? Six to four, that's two. Six to four, that's three. Six to four, that's four. Six to four, that's five. All right, now with the weapon, nice and easy. We're gonna do, starting from the sixth position, we're going to go four, six, extend. Not four, halfway to six, and extend. I want four, all the way to six, find that parry, and go. So if you're coming back, I don't want you to stop when you touch the weapon and trying to squeeze that point in there. So once again, it'll be four, six, extend. All right, now four, halfway to six, and extend. Four, six, extend. Four, six, extend. I'm moving around, you don't have to. Four, six, extend. Four, six, extend. Might be better if I stand it on guard. Four, six, extend. All right, so let's do five in the on guard position. Four, Six, extend. Four, six, extend. I think that's three. Four, six, extend. We'll go and do ten. Four, six, extend. I think that's five. Four, six, extend. Are you tired of me saying four, six, extend yet? Four, six, extend. That's the seventh one. Four, six, extend. That's the eighth one. Four, six, extend. That's the ninth one. Keep your knees bent. Four, six, extend. All right? That's the tenth one. Now, we're going to go start, starting from the four position. We're going to go six to four, extend. All right? So, starting from the four position. Six, four, extend. Six, four, extend. Extend. Now, the way I'm doing this, so last time we went four, six, and then we went straight. The way I'm doing this, not incorrect, but there's other ways you can do it. We're going from four, uh, we're starting from four to six, coming back to four. Now, when I extend, I'm moving back to the sixth position. So, yeah, if we did it the exact same way from the other way, if we're coming from six, four to six, then straight from six, we can go four, six, four, straight, all right? But for this one, I want you to rotate back to six, all right? So let's do 10. Starting from the four position, four, six, extend. Starting from four again. Four, six, extend. Four, six, extend. Okay, it's three. Here's the fourth one. Four, six, extend. Oh, sorry. Four, six, extend. Fifth one. Four, six, extend. Seventh one. Four, six, extend. Four, six, extend. Eighth one. Four, six, extend. You're probably thinking I can't count, so I'm just counting. Ninth one. Four, six, extend. Tenth one. So the last one, you can imagine, we're going to lunges. All right, so we're gonna go back from six position, go to four, go back to six, and lunge. All right, so it looks like this. I'm not gonna do a big lunge, make sure I still stay on the camera. All right, so starting from the six position, four, six, go. One, four, six, go. Two, four, six, Go. Three, four, six, 
go. Seven. Remember, this is not four. Halfway, and then go. I want you to make sure you get back to that sixth position. There's a difference. You're not right in the middle. You're back in the sixth position. Let's go for a fifth one. Four, six, and then go. Six one. Four, six, go. Seventh one. Four, six, go. I'm not going far. I'm not asking you to go far either, so that back foot should also stay on the ground. All right? Eighth one. Four, six, go. Nine, four, six, go. Last one, four, six, go. All right, let's do one more of that. This time we're starting from the four position. We're gonna go starting from four, straight to six, and then we'll do a repose from there, okay? So, four position, relax your shoulders, stand on guard, back to stays flat. Six, go. That's one. Six, go. Two. Six, go. Three. Remember, you should go from one side of the letter V to the other side of the letter V. So the letter V does not stop in the middle. All right? Third one. Four, six, go. Fifth one. Four, six, you're going straight to target. Six one. Four, six, go. Seven one. Four, six. Using your fingers and going straight to target. Eight. See how the weapon's bending? Not this way, not this way. Alright? Nine one. Four, six, go. Be a little consistent where you get. Last one. Four, six, go. Okay. So that's our blade work. Work on that. It's easy enough you can do once every day before the next class. Um, but practice that, simple stuff. Hopefully you've been doing all this practice. So when I see you guys again in October, we're ready to go. All right, so we'll see you this time in football. Hey guys. Um, second day of me filming this uh, part of the class. Uh, the fans are not on, so I don't have to yell above the fans, and it, uh, it's actually quite a cool today outside, so it's not that hot. Uh, so here's our footwork. Um, first set, pretty simple. We're only gonna do three sets, um, but the first one we've done before is just making sure we're doing small advances. If you can mark yourself, two, three, it's a constant movement like this, okay? Keep the advances the same distance. So I don't want you to go big and then realize you're running out of space and you start to do small advances, okay? So I can do it about 11 and 12, all right? So start off in the back, get comfortable in being or doing small advances. A lot of people, they think they're doing small advances, but then what happens, they realize that back foot comes up to their front foot, and to be able to compensate instead of doing this, they have to take big steps, okay? So feet apart, nice and easy, nice even speed, small advances, 10 steps, at least. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17. So from trying to triangle, I can do it in 17. All right, so you can do it in 10. Let's do one more, or not one more, two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, that's, that's my back foot going from trying to try. I'll go a little bit bigger, see if I can do it in 10. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm a little too big on those 10. So I'll shorten it up a little bit. I'll do one more with you. See if I can make it right at 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So about 11. All right? So work on, continue to work on taking small steps. All right? Being able to do this and not going big. Okay? We're not also talking itty bitty steps. So it's not like that. 
Taking small steps to get to your opponent. All right. So next, we're going to incorporate uh, some of the bounces that we've been doing. All right. So again, in this two meter space, I'm going to bounce three times. Triple and bounce forward. Bounce three times. Triple back. Not triple retreat back. So that's one set. So bounce three times. Triple advance forward. Bounce three times. Triple retreat back. That's one. Okay? So pretty easy. It looks like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's one. All right? It's got it? All right, here we go. We're going to do 10 of these. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's the second one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Third one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fourth one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fifth one. So the last five, I'm going to not stop between each set. So I want to continue to move. All right? So. Last five, so we'll count five more. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right. So it's not so bad. First one, I gave you some time in between each section. Section. Uh, last one, there was no rest in between. So, three bounces. Triple retreat forward. Three, uh, three bounces again. Let's try that again. Three bounces. Triple advance forward. Three bounces. Triple retreat back. Each one of those is set. Okay. So, last piece of footwork today. Pretty easy today. This is going to be five bounces, then a straight advance lunge. All right? So for the first five, I'm not going to make you do big advanced lunges. All right? So the first five is just nice, medium, quick advance lunge. All right? So five bounces and an advance lunge. And hold it. Recover. That's one. Make sure you're on your ground before you go. That's two. Notice where my hand is going. They're not drooping down. Ready? Go. That's three. Ready? Go. That's four. Go. So on this last five, I just want you to go a little further with your advanced lunge. Make sure you're on the ground when you start. You can bounce up and down straight if you like, or you can bounce back and forth. So I'll do the first two just straight up and down bounces. Last three I'll do, I'll bounce back and forth, which is how I usually ten bounce. Ready? Go. A lot of the advanced lunges. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Oh, I forgot I'm going to do back and forth. Ready? Fourth one. And the fifth one. Okay, so work on that. Watch it in slow motion if you have to. Um, I know it's pretty easy on this one, so work on it. Do it a few times if you need to. I encourage you to do it a few times. Uh, next section will be the skill work, so I'll see you in skill work. Skill work section. Uh, pretty easy skill work today. You don't have to hit anything. Um, 
but uh, it'll be easier if you have a partner. The, the, the only way you can do this is to have a partner. So if your partner has a broomstick or PVC pipe, anything long that they can use uh, will be fine. What we're going to work on today, if okay, we'll go on guard, is a point line. So to tell you what a point line is, they'll give you a point line. A point line is a pre-existing attack. So if I weren't doing anything and I wasn't attacking or I wasn't moving forward and Gabe put out this pointed line, it's a pre-existing attack, all right? It's an attack. So if I go straight forward and attack Gabe and he hits me with that point line, it's his touch, even though I'm moving forward. So let's say, for example, we're not doing anything. He establishes a point line and then I decide to go. Boom, he hits me, I hit him. That's his touch, all right? A point line is a pre-existing attack. Now, that's a little bit different from this. So move forward just a little bit. Now, I'm moving forward, he's moving back, and he tries to do a point line, and then I finish. That's fine, because I'm moving forward, all right? Now, if there's no movement forward, there's no attack happening on my part, and he establishes the point line, and he leaves it there, he doesn't move it, and I attack, and he hits me, his touch. He can move forward and backward on the point line. So, he can go backwards as long as that weapon stays there. He can even lunge for the point line, still a point line, all right? He cannot alter where that point line is. So, if we look at you, you can't go from here to here. You can't go from here to here, here to here. All right, it has to stay where it is. So in this exercise, what we're gonna do is derobe the point line. So what I mean is this. So let's say he gives a point line. The easiest thing to do, one of the easiest ways to defeat a point line is to take a beat. So once I beat the weapon, he has a point line, I beat the weapon, it's now my priority if I start my attack, all right? So most people try to go after the point line. They're gonna try to hit it. What he's going to do, what you're going to do is derobe the point line. So if I'm coming from this direction, all he does is give it a small circle or a circle four and he gets past the point line. So maybe if I come in from this direction, he leaves it there. He doesn't move the guard. So this would be incorrect. So he's going to move the guard way out of line. Incorrect. That's not a derobe. Okay? So what we're going to practice, if you relax for a second, one of the things that we're going to practice, and if you've been taking private lessons, you've seen this too, is, relax, recover, is understanding which way you need to disengage or to roll. Because there's a lot of times I've done lessons where I'm going underneath and the person constantly goes there. And they can't figure out which way to disengage, all right? As a fencer, you have to know which way to move the weapon. Now, some people also do this. It's like they go away, away, away. They don't know which way to go. You have to be able to determine and discover which way to move the weapon. All right? So I can move it any. I can go left and right. I can circle. I can circle this way. I can go up, down, left, right, this way. And I'm completely missing his weapon. Now he's not moving it all over the place, so this would be this this would be incorrect. I'm gonna have Gabe look for my weapon. This would be incorrect. Just completely moving. That's not what we're looking for. We're leaving that point where it is. Okay? So in this exercise, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to ten the Romans. We're gonna start at one, then go up to two, then go to three, go up to four. Alright? Pretty easy, we're gonna stand still. Alright? So Point in line, weapon is straight, hands above the shoulder a little bit. Point is pointed toward the target. You don't want to give a point line like that, you're not going to hit it. All right? All right, so pretty easy. We're going to start with one derobent. He misses. Now, for the partner, you can go left, right, up, down, circle four, circle six. Your choice. Ready? Let's do two derobents. One, two. All right, now you don't necessarily do it the way I did it. You can go past the weapon anytime. So partner, the important thing here is making sure you go past the weapon and not around it, all right? Three to Romans. One, two, that's okay, three. All right, that was my fault. Let's go for four to Romans, ready? One, two, three, four. Let's go for five. One, 
two, three, four, five. Now I'm going pretty fast. You might have to go pretty slow. All right, it's up to you. Let's go for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Now, I didn't mention this. If you make a mistake, if they make a mistake and you hit the weapon, you have to start all over from one. Okay? So he's at seven. I'm not going to make it more difficult. Don't guess which way they're going. Here's, here's the other thing I, I tell people to do. If I start moving here, don't start moving immediately. You don't know, from here, you don't know if I'm going to continue or if I'm going to come back. Go ahead and wait till I'm almost on top of you before you move. Some people already start moving here, and worse yet, they've done the circle, and they're back to where they started from before I go. Also, the important thing here is make sure you go back you end up back to where he started from. He's back to where he started from. So this would be incorrect. So I'm ending someplace else. I'm ending someplace else. All right, so he's at seven. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, eight. His hands get a little hot. Ready? There you go. And nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So a lot of people, especially when they come in, they like to do this. They're going to come in, they see the point line, they're just going to whack it. Oh, no, not there. All right? Or a lot of times they will come in and try to do the Speed attack. All right. So the most common one they see you see it coming in, and it's just boom. So if you want to rope that one, they're going to go really fast. They're going to go whack. Or the other one that they like to do really fast because they like to just hit it and go in. They'll start from down here, and they'll come up this way. All right. So yeah, if you're doing a rope, you have to also understand where they're starting from. All right. So if I'm here, chances are. Most likely, I'm going to come in this direction, all right? If I'm here coming in, chances are I'm coming in from this direction. So you sometimes have to make an educated guess, especially if they're going to try to go after the weapon pretty fast. But otherwise, if they're going slow, you've got enough time to see. So we're at 10, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? All right, so next one, we're going to do uh, a little bit of movement. Uh, I'm going to look at the camera so you can see how much space I have, so that way I know how far I can move forward and backward. All right. So a little bit forward. All right. Move up a little bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to do five retreats with the derobans. So he's going to give me extension. I'm going to take a step forward. He's going to take a step back. And at the same time, I'm going to look for the weapon. One. That's one. We're going to go up to five. Two. Three. Four, five. So all we're doing is we're adding movement. All right. So let's do three of those. One, two, three, four, five. Good. I'm gonna go a little bit faster for game. Ready? Move up a little bit. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. All right. So we're gonna do one last one this time. This time we're gonna go and we're gonna be advancing. All right, ready? On guard. So one, two. So as I retreat, he does one advance. Three, four, and five. We'll do two more. Ready? Let's move over a little bit. Small steps. One, two. Last one, ready? Let's go a little bit faster. One, two, three, four, five. Very good, all right. Simple exercise, uh, we'll work on that. Hopefully you can find a partner for that. And we'll see you in the cool down section.
Um, you will need either three rolled up socks, three gloves, uh, but definitely you need one glove that looks different from the other. All right, so we're gonna start off with that one. Gabe's gonna stand away from you. The first one is easy, all right? He just has to catch a glove with one hand. So whatever I throw it, catch it with whatever hand. Let's, let's just stay with whatever hand that you pencil. So if I throw it over there, catch it with the right hand. Okay, pretty easy. All right, that one's easy, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a second glove. I'm going to throw them both up. He's going to ignore the white one, and he's just going to grab the black one. Ready? Good. Once again, he's going to ignore the white, grab the little black. Good. One more time. Pretty easy. All right. Now, I'm going to make it a little bit more difficult. When I throw it up, I'm going to yell the color, black or white. Whatever I color, whatever color I call out, he's going to grab. Black. Good. White. Quickly in succession. Alright? So you'll hear from me a little bit later on. 
Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you in Bout Analysis. Okay, welcome to our bout analysis. As you can see, uh, we are going back in time a little bit, the 1989 World Fencing Championships. Men's team foil with Russia is going to be on the left side and, and Germany will be on the right side. But if you notice, if you can see my pointer here, uh, this, this team match is an hour and 30 minutes long. So we're not going to do the entire team match, but we're going to focus on one fencer. One of my favorite fencers, Alexander, Alexander Romankov. Uh, he's from Russia. Um, but uh, if you can look him up, um, you can see some of his stats. Uh, I love him um, because he's got great footwork, great blade work. Reminds me of some of the teammates and coaches I had in college. Um, but he's got some great attacks here. I've, I'm sure pretty, I'm pretty sure I watched through uh, this bout before. I, I don't remember all of it. So we should have Alexander Roman Coffee. I'm going to pause here for a second. Um, let's go on a little bit. So we can see the lights. All right, so, so here are the lights. The one thing that I need to mention here that's going to seem different is the lights. So when we fence now, when we score a touch, the lights appear on our side. So back in 1989, um, if he were to score a touch, the red light will appear on Alexander's side. So if Alexander were to score a touch, the green light will appear. So the lights were switched back then. All right, it wasn't until, uh, I don't remember, um, around 96, 97, that the, that the lights switched to as we know them right now. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, if you see a light come on the left side, that means he scored a touch. So, or if you see the white light come on the left side, that means he's, he landed on a target, you know, whether on or off target, um, and vice versa. If you see a green light or white light on the right side, it'll be Alexander's touch. Okay, so let's continue. And the fencing's not going to be too entirely different. And he said, "No, no, 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 no. That's not. <laughs> that's after the the halt. The fencing's going to be different, but not too dissimilar." And that's one of my favorite attacks by Alexander Romankov. Uh, we, we, I think we've we did it in a class, um, one or two videos ago, where you're using body movement and footwork to keep your fencer off balance. And you see him go forward, and it's just like fake, fake. And there's not just movement with the weapon. There's movement with the body. He doesn't know when he's going to finally attack, and then finally just Alexander explodes with this great attack. You'll see it. Stutter, 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 bang! So 1-0, you see how the green light came on, that's Alexander's touch. So it's not the pushes that we normally see, they don't hide the weapon as much. Um, here, you, they, they might get caught with a lot of preparations. Um, Notice the small movements for his parry. They're not, he keeps it right there. But he covers that target really, really well. Um, but 80s, 90s, you can get caught with preparations a lot, especially if you do the push, 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 hiding the weapon. Um, a nice little touch. Uh, and the thing is, we don't have a <laughs> slow motion on these. Went back. Nice little beat and faint low and attack high. Roman calls a nice clean fencer. It's a parry repost by Romakov, but it's off target. Should be off target. Yeah, off target. Probably a little too close to start off with. Uh, referees back then, they they might have just went. Notice they're they're not really in on guard when they when he says fence. Should 
Should be after the halt. No, no, he's saying no, 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 that's after the halt. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> a lot of close contact there. And we've worked on that as well. Finding a target. And this bout, if you find this bout online, I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, you also see a young Gulabitsky, also a great full fencer, repost by Romankov off target. Was a good angle to see it though. Still the attack, I think, from. Yeah. Oh no, okay. So let's take a look at that again. So, what I the way I probably would have called this now it would have been a beat attack from the right and then the counter attack and then the continuation um, I probably would not have called that preparation um, but he did like I said uh, back in 1989 90s uh, they they really penalized you for for not extending to target um, so if you watch I really wish they had slow motion I know I could do slow motion here but um, Yeah, you hear him say in preparation. I'll watch again. Yeah, uh, in preparation. So, you know, and we did that a lot when, when I was younger. Um, we, we look for those preparations. You know, there wasn't that push, 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 hide, 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 hide without the point. Um, and then attacking when they when you see them counterattack. Now, if you pull back and he goes forward, yeah, that's an attack in prep. I think uh, Romankov for his round, he's up 3 0. Nice repost, but off target. And that's Alexander Romankov right there. He probably needs to fix his LeMay. Uh, Robinkoff is a, is a coach somewhere in the United States now. I can't remember where. He used to have a camp. Would have loved to have taken a camp with him. Not the best angle to see things. Repost is off target. No, too close. There you go. He needs to be in. There you go. <laughs> the attack is off target. Visibly upset with that one. <laughs> Again, not the best angles. Oops, I'm sorry. Just kicked the tripod there. Repost is off target. Mm. Okay, the attack was invalid. Or off target. From the right. Oh, nice disengage attack. Uh, you see that? Let's watch it. There's that high one, and then a disengage back to the four, but he hits off target. <laughs> so now the referee's being a little bit more particular about the on guard. Oh, wow. And he gives, and Robinkoff acknowledges that. And we're not going to an instant replay, so we'll see if we can see that. Uh, and it's a thrown point from to the back from the right side from Germany. So you'll see the attack from Robinkoff. There's the attack. And a thrown point to the back. We've talked about target acquisition, and those are things when you see different targets that are closed off, now don't go after them. You have to be able to quickly acknowledge what's open and go for it. Repost is good. Touch to the left. Yeah, there we go. Let's watch that. And he's off balance. He didn't recover from that. Um, one of our last classes, we talked about being able to recover from big lunges, and he didn't recover. Left him open for that one. Watch one more time. Flash. And he does a coupe 
There's that coupe. He manages to catch it on time. I'm sorry, I'm rewinding it's a lot. Nice, solid, nice, solid parry repost there from Alexander. An off balance attack from, from the German. And there's that changes again. Oh, an attack from the German on target. Let's we'll see where that landed. It's gay. I thought it was gray. Uh, you, the other thing that you won't see here, um, you won't see the LeMay on the bib. That didn't come till much, much later on. I think I was out, out of college by then. So after 1999, couldn't even see that attack. Uh, not a best angle for that one. Looks like the final attack from the German in a parry repost. Oh, here we go. We actually have a slow motion. There's a... Actually, an attack from the German. Look at this. Look at this. Let's, let's watch that slow motion. There's a beat and then a parry. He's trying to find a way through. A, the final attack is it looks like another coupe attack from the German, but he missed. And then the uh, the counter attack from um, from Romankov. So we're gonna pause here. We're going to fast forward. Romankov just won that one, so we're gonna go to 3827, which is Romankov's next bout. Um, let's see. Here we go. Close enough. 3824. Go ahead, press play. But things to point out is is their their body position, and especially Romankov. He he's usually very poised. A little testing of the waters. Let him go. A little dance there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Is very classic. He leaves that point right there. The attack from the right is off target. But he doesn't hide that weapon. That's an attack off target. But it's a nice, I think, a coupe disengage or let's see, let's watch that again. Eh, it's just like a um, a coupe over, then he goes very low for that attack. And a good parry, but uh, a missed opportunity for the repost. No touch. There's absolutely no runoff on either side of the strip. Uh, and newer strips now, there's at least, you know, maybe about a foot, foot and a half on either side, so if you step actually off your piste then you're still on the race platform this one if you're off you're off you're going off the strip uh, and they've they've lobbied to remove those race strips now because several fencers have gotten hurt because of the race strips um, in preparation then the attack from the left yep so I still see preparations <laughs> Yep, you hear the attack uh, in preparation. Something to so we may not be able to get with get away with preparation attacks now, but something that he does, he also blocks it out or tries to block it out. He doesn't just stand there and take the hit. It, it's sort of like when we watched um, uh, Abu Al Qasem. From Egypt in the last um, in the last bout, uh, not only did he counterattack, but he usually tried to block it out. Um, he didn't effectively block it out well. Uh, he still got hit off target, but he got the attack in preparation. But if you counterattack, don't just counterattack. 
do something to keep them from getting <laughs> from hitting you. But I think I mentioned you don't see the electrical bibs. Uh, that didn't come till after 1999. One, one, yeah. Long belt. Oh! Attack should be off target, yeah. Oh, I, I think I remember this one. So let's take a look at that again. I remember this touch. So I would have just said the attack is off target. And and the referee calls. So let's watch that again. I think we all saw the same thing. The attack from the right. Here it is. Off target. But the referee says... There's a parry and a repost from the left. And watch, watch Gulbitsky after he makes a call. He thinks it's off target as well. Yes, he, watch him. He'll point. He goes, yeah, it's this off target. Here's a point. Yeah, it's his, right? And he looks at him and like, what? No, it's mine? He goes, okay. <laughs> watch his reaction. Yeah. I don't... He, do, he doesn't agree with that, even though it's his touch. Another reason why I like Golubitsky, you know, even when points went to him, he'll still disagree with you. <laughs> you can see the German head coach not happy with that one. Oh, wow, that's a nice solid touch. And to be honest, I I don't like doing those attacks. He, he doesn't like disengage from the sixth side to the fourth side. I'm not that strong with attacking against the left handed fourth side, but he's good at it. Let's watch that one more time. But you'll notice. After this attack, boom, he's right back there. He doesn't overcommit. He's able to recover from that. He tries to get the parry repost back, um, but he's late. Looks like they're yeah. It looks like they're changing um, changing side judges. I think. And again, that would have been very dangerous. You see, watch this pull, pull, pull. Um, us, you know, our, our fencing now, get away with something like that. But, you know, Golubitsky had... Not Golubitsky, I'm sorry. Alexander Romankov would have had some openings for preparations there, but... And actually, he was probably turning around as he got hit with a repost. Let's watch for the repost. Not a best angle for that one. Still got the repost while he's getting away. I'm not quite sure where he got hit there. The score is 4-1 for Romankov. There's those... There. He's trying to scare them with his blade, his body. He's trying to get a reaction. The attack from the right is good. Touch to the right. So now it's 4 2. See some footwork over there. Let's go back. Some footwork. We almost never see any more, but we do it in class. Some checks. Good small footsteps. Or there's that jump. Oh, 
Could have been a yellow card. He's asking for a yellow card. But he gets the touch anyway. Look at this. He gets the parry. Continues going backwards. Nice angle here. Continuation. And he... Roman Cuff wins that one. So let's get to the last one with Roman Cuff. I believe it's at 106.30. 106.30. Here we go. Last little bit of that bout. There we go. Here we go. This will be Alexander's last bout in this team match. Counterattack by. Oh no. So the attack from the right. Yeah. I went counterattack immediately because my my brains, uh, the way the lights go is still modern day. I have to switch off. Ooh. Oh, covering target. Hmm, interesting. On the preparation, attacks off target. But you'll see that... Nice, nice changing in tempos. Not just with the body, but with the weapon. But he likes to use it with coupes. There it is again. There it is again. Attack from the left. Yeah. Let's watch that again. That's a nice one. There's it attack. I could see where the German might have thought he was in preparation, but uh, that was just all Roman Kopf. Oh, nice repost. Yeah, other things that we've mentioned before. If you watch these fencers, they've got a great position in the six. Attacks off target. Oh, almost got away with that again. Oh, he's covering target again. Let's see if we can see that. <laughs> oh, so he's pointing at he's pointing at the side judge probably. He said a po side judge is covering target. <laughs> so he gets left gets a touch. Uh, I don't know if that would have been covering target. Here. Attack from the right. He's really putting on the speed there. I wish we had a better angle on that one. Look at that attack. We had a good angle on that one. Just a nice, solid, maybe a little bit of coupe before it goes. And if you watch this coupe, it's not that far. It's just beyond the point of the tip. Bang! Let's watch his movements. Body still upright. He's not overcompensating. He's still in a good position. Referee switching sides. <laughs> Repost is off target. Oh, 
Good distance there. Good distance. Look at that. Yeah, they're they're very conscious of their distance. Oh, I should have been off the ground there. Caught in his preparation. He tried to attack. Counterattack landed. The attack from the right is off target. Let's see. Yeah, would have been a good parry repost. He threw that point across the chest of uh, of Romankov. So if you watch his touch again, for those that have been working on thrown points, we've done that with me against a left-hander. First time we've seen Alexander Romankov down on this uh, this team match. Oh, the attack from the left. Oh, really? Hmm. I don't agree with that one. Yes. Now, what do you guys think? I thought I thought that might have been Romankov's. Because I, I didn't see a repost. And if you even watch the slow motion, unless that beat there. Okay, so there, I did hear, I hear, there, there's a blade contact. There you go. Well, uh, so, so Romankov actually loses one. Um, but uh, just to let you know, um, oh, that's Golubitsky. You can we'll, we'll watch maybe one or two touches here while I'm talking. But uh, Russia does eventually win this uh, world championship here. Um, Golubitsky, if you ever shop at Leon Paul, the the Golubitsky Pro, um, the blade and and the grip, uh, that's him. Um, that's Sergey Golubitsky, also a uh, coach now um, in the United States. Uh, once coached race and Bowden as well um, race and Bowden does have a different coach now um, but uh, Golubisky definitely a great fencer maybe we'll, we'll watch him again uh, another time anyway so hope everyone's healthy hope everyone's safe uh, we're getting pretty close to starting classes again uh, so we look forward to seeing you then um, but uh, let me know if you have any questions email me uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. The All-American Fencing Academy is grateful to our sponsors who are helping us bring you our on-strip, at-home video training classes. Fox Bookkeeping, helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to run their businesses with confidence by helping them know what the score is. Steve C. McRae, PA. Burlington Family Law, Divorce, and Personal Injury Attorney. Matthew Woods VO, Professional Voiceover Services. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.